games tonight. Flavio, welcome. Alright, it's start time. Always happy to get started. So we're going to start our lecture tonight. It's a new week. It's a new whole week. So it's a whole new set of lessons. Uh, we're going to be going through the end game and I'm anticipating multiple lessons in the end game. So this is definitely not going to be the only night for the end game. Alrighty, uh, I have set up a study. I've invited Flavio and Chris to it. So they're going to be able to help me later. I'll just give you a, a little warning really early before anybody even gets here. I will tell you that um, I'm expecting a phone call from, a, hey, how's Chris? How's it going? Um, I'm expecting a phone call from an airline because I have to set up some uh, flight for tomorrow. So I'm going to, hey, LONP, um, when that happens, I'm going to hopefully have Flavio and Chris, oh, and I'll even add LONP to this to this area so that he can also participate. And you guys will be able to play through some of the situations I've set up. So that way you guys can continue and I can watch, but I'll, I'll get this phone call taken care of when it happens. But meantime, let's see how far we can get started before we run into any issues of that nature, right? We don't, we're trying not to run into those na uh, issues. And I'm trying something new tonight. I have my chat up here next to my game window so hopefully I don't have to look down much at all that'd be nice that'd be a goal for me so that uh, I can do better at, at tracking chat you know I'm not great at that already all right so first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is how to checkmate and I wish more were here at this time because more of us I know need this education but I'll go over it I wasn't going to spend too much time on it anyway I'm thinking about 10 minutes so how do you checkmate with a king and a queen against a king? Hola, hola Flavio. So um, the easiest way to checkmate with a queen and a king is to limit your enemy king's movement. The enemy king wants to get to the center of the board and keep running around the center of the board uh, because you cannot checkmate in this situation with no pawns and no other pieces on the board. You're not going to be able to checkmate the black king in the center of the board. So that's, that's going to be the goal, to do that. All right, uh, family sneaking by. Anyway, so our goal is to limit this king's movement. So one way to do that would be to come here, and I take away all of these lines. Now, because it is a queen, we have to be careful not to stalemate our opponent. So that's okay. We still, you know, he still has a lot of lines. But the easiest way to checkmate your opponent is to eventually treat your queen like it's a rook. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But, um, queens can go diagonally. So that's where you get into risk of a stalemate. And so we want to avoid that. So let's say black moves. Let's say black moves here. Hello. This black's turn. Hello. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Allow me to move my pieces. Thank you. 
Uh, let me make sure this chapter isn't uh, messed up thinking it's some other kind of chapter. Nope, normal analysis. Shouldn't be a problem. Come on, King. Move. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, gotta love it when you're stupid. So I was I was trying to move it illegally. I just thought it was sometimes it glitches and doesn't want to move. So I thought it was that was the problem. So the, now I can't immediately, because this king moved further away, right? Moved further over this way. I can limit him again. Because my goal is to trap this king on one edge of the board. I don't care which edge of the board I use, but I need to trap him on an edge of the board to administer checkmate. So if he stays over here, I'm not going to go here and keep going here and keep going here. Because that's how you get a stalemate. Watch, guys. You know, right? You go here and you say, okay, I'm going to just keep chasing that king. And you're going to chase that king eventually to where now he has only these two squares and you're running the risk of stalemate. And when you get this king over here and, and you put that king, let's say, here thinking, okay, next move, I checkmate, you've taken away that square. So we don't want to do all that. We want to just, as soon as we can get that king to that back beat. So let's here to bring in our king. And I know it's, this time it's my turn. See, that was the glitch. I, I told you it glitches sometimes. I told you. <laughs> the big one? Is that cat starting to creep you out there, little Flavio? Um, yes, Irv, thank you for noticing I was moving into check and, and me, the teacher, couldn't see that. All right, so we go back and forth. Now, I do not step in front of the queen. The queen is doing its job, keeping the king on these last two files. So I'm not going to move the king in front of the queen. And I'm not going to check here or here. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I want to get it so that the king, watch this, king still can escape here. So again, I could limit the squares. I could limit the squares. But I'm going to show you a technique that you could use with the rook as well as with the king. And you can do it in your sleep. Okay, you could do this in your sleep. I'm just going to move the queen one. And let's say he moves here, you move here, you move here, and you move here. And he finally moves here. And guess what? I can move any one of these three squares. I am now hitting this whole row. Now notice that the king cannot move back out. Why? Because my king is hitting those squares. This situation where the kings can't get past each other and they're directly across from each other is called opposition. But it's more than that. The opposition is any time when you have an odd number of squares between the kings. And it's when you make it an odd number of squares. So if you notice, um, at this point, white did not make the opposition. Black took the opposition. But it's okay. We don't care who took the opposition. We, well, we do. We want black to have taken the opposition so that we have a move. Because if we did it, it wouldn't be our move. So now it's our move, and with the opposition, that king has to go back. Okay? So now that king, let's say, goes here. Now I don't have to be as concerned because now I have the king on the last rank. Now I'm going to be able to checkmate right away. So I can go straight at the king. Normally you wouldn't want to do that with the rook because the king could escape. But with the queen, the king can't escape. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yes, yes. We're going to go uh, check out the um, exercises, also the puzzles. I definitely recommend using the puzzles for learning how to do things, right? All right. So again, uh, it's just one is I, don't, I want, don't want to block my queen ever. I want that queen to go. I want to get one square in between. And with the queen, because of the king, I have many more squares that I can checkmate on. All right. So here's a quiz question for you. Let's go back. Um, all right. How many squares can white move to and say checkmate? Two? Uh, nope. Any other guesses? How many squares can white move to and say checkmate? One? Nope. It's white's move. How many squares can he move to and say checkmate? So we realize it has to be the queen, right? The king can never attack the other king. So the queen can move here. That'll be checkmate. Queen can move here. That'll be checkmate. Here is checkmate. And here is checkmate. Awesome sauce. 
let's say uh, we don't, and let's say we move here, and um, we move here, and we move here. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, so we'll go here, here. Okay. How many squares can we move to now and say checkmate? Well, actually, I'd rather be here. But anyway, so one, two, three, and four, right? Because this also is checkmate. The king can't get away. All righty. So what we talked about problems is things like this. If you're in this situation, you've just stalemated Black's king. And we do not want to stalemate, right? We want to win. So wherever you're at, first thing to remember is that you cannot checkmate with the queen alone. So you could chase the king all over the place, checking him, checking him, checking him, but you cannot checkmate him with the queen alone. You also cannot checkmate with a rook alone. The, the concept is the same. I need to limit black. I can either limit black in this box, I have a choice, or I can limit black to this box. Which one is better? I don't think it matters. You pick. They're three by three, they're three by eight, either way. So I have to pick. I can go here or I can come all the way up here. So let's say I come here. King normally will, should go and attack the rook. And the rook could just run away. King starts going over to attack the rook. King comes up. If this king ever makes a mistake of going back, you just say thank you. Now you have only two. Now you only have two rows to play on. Only two anymore. So then we keep coming in, and we keep coming in, and we have to move our rook. Move it away as far as you can. Keep coming in. I'm going to go here. Now, do you think I go here, here, or here? So should it be D, E, or F, guys? D, E, or F? Because we want to move closer to the king, but D, E, or F in this situation? D, very good, Chris. Definitely. We want to move to D because if... The king moves now, taking the opposition, we have checkmate. So we're trying to checkmate the fastest way possible, so we go here. So now the king says, oops, I can't go there. He's going to go here, and now he's trapped. Because eventually, eventually, he has to get in front of us, and we get checkmate. All right, so pretty straightforward, pretty simple. The concept is to limit the king to a box and then keep squeezing that box every chance you get. So I could have went here. King can come down. I can start coming. He can come down. I can start coming. Now watch this one. He comes down. Now I don't want to do this. I want him to do this. So what can I do to get him to go where I want? Right? All right. I only have one square. If I go here and he does what I want, I can't go here and push him back. So I can also go all the way over here, and then he starts running this way, and I have to chase, and I have to chase, and I have to remember not to let him have my rook. Can't give up the rook, he comes back. Now, I've been moving my king, I have to stop. I want him to go here. So I do a stall move, he goes here. Now I have room, right? Last time I didn't have any room. So he goes here. And again, do I go straight at him? No. I go between him and the rook if I can. If I could go between him and the rook, those lines between him and the rook, that means when he comes across, I get to push him down. And if he does here, we just totally take away that spot even earlier. Now, I didn't have to use the rook at that count. I could come here because, look, the king takes away all those squares. He would have to go here, and then I could take away. But I still have to take this away. I don't want to let him escape and get back towards the middle. Pretty straightforward, I hope. I think that's straightforward for most of us. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it's easy. I hope you got it. Let's move on to what happens if you are lucky enough to have two rooks against the king. Then life is even easier, and you could do what we call a ladder. And so the first thing I'm going to do is get my king out of the way, believe it or not, because my king's in the way, right? Comes down, and... I'm going to be able to ladder, and guess what? He has to go this way. Now he attacks my rook, so I'm gonna move my rook away. Now he's, he's a pretty good player. So he's gonna come here because he knows I wanted to do that. And now I can't do that, right? I gotta wait, he's gotta move away now. I gotta wait till that king moves. So I could go here, it's protected by the rook. 
and the if the rook goes this way, if the king goes that way, we chase him. And he comes back here trying to get me again. I could do that again. He says, Dag, you know, he's too, this guy's good. This guy's good. Well, now you can move either rook. Which one should you move? The one that's furthest away. And the reason is because now he has to go this row. And if he wants to try to chase your rooks, he's got to get all the way over here to chase your rook. While if I used the other rook, then all he has to do is come over here. And he's chasing my rook. And now i got to move the rook away. Still easy as breeze, easy breezy, but so why do they call the ladder? It's a ladder because you get to do uh, this kind of maneuver. I'll show you. So let's say we go back to here and let's say the king went this way. So we go this way, now we're taking away both of these. The king might go this way, you, now you take away both of these. King goes this way, you move this one. See, we just alternate which one we're moving. And then we, and so they say you make it a ladder, right? You just keep alternating the rooks so that they're taking away both rooks. Hopefully you have no questions about any of that. That went fast. I think we spent a whole 10 minutes on it, but hopefully you got it. Now, let's talk about why we're talking about end games at all. And this might be interesting to you guys. I found it interesting. You guys played a tournament last Monday. We played 19, count them, 19 games in that tournament and we were trying to remember all the things we learned in what lessons 1 through 10. 19 games you guys played. How many of those games do you think ended in an end game that got to an end game? In other words, how many of those games ended quickly with a checkmate before you ever got to the end of the game or somebody resigning, they dropped their queen and somebody resigned. How many out of 19 games do you think that it took that they actually got to an end game or didn't get to an end game. All right, so Chris says 15 out of 19 ended early, right? Just somebody smashed them, hit them over the head, uh, checkmated them early, like a 15 move game or a 10 move game or a 21 move game. We had them all. We had them all. And I'm going to tell you the fun part is that no, it wasn't 15. Nope, G dot, it wasn't 17. It wasn't 17 games. Hmm, ah, yeah, how many were there? Come on. Uh, 10, very good, Chris. Much better. Yeah, 10 LMP, much better. So we had, we had out of 19 games, eight games end early. Eight games. Hey, I'm a light. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. I'm a light bulb. So uh, eight, only eight out of 19 games didn't make it to the end game. Now, to be fair, Three of the games that made it to the end game were with overwhelming force. So in other words, like a queen and a rook against just pawns and a king. So it was a slaughter and there really wasn't an end game worth studying. Fair enough. But eight of the end games, eight of the total games and eight out of the 11 end games were solid end game studies that could be made of it. It is awesome. So. I will show you just a few of those games, and then we're going to talk about what you need to know to win these kind of games. All right. So here's one of the games, and I'm going to um, jump. Actually, have it documented somewhere. I forget where. Ah, oh, I got lucky. Went right to it. Move 31. Now we're in an end game, and this is a tough game. It's Leonard against uh, Lula Queen, and uh, Lula Queen is only 908, and Leonard is 1519. That's a gigantic disparity, guys. That's 600 points difference. And Lula played tough. She's white. And she's gotten them into an endgame. All right? And I can actually go back a couple of moves to here. This is where they entered the endgame. Traded off rooks. And they are in the endgame. And look at it. You have three pawns against three pawns on this side. Lula had four pawns against four pawns, but one of them is doubled. Solid game. Bishop against a knight. Now, white gets to steal a pawn right away, and he does. And then it's white's turn, says, I got to get my knight into the game somehow. So starts here. Uh, the bishop goes after another pawn. She says, no, 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 I'm not giving away any more pawns today. Bishop comes back and attacks the knight. All logical, right? And then we get this check. Now, the check is probably, well, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. 
check, and then comes back here to attack the pawn. Nicely done. And now can come here, no, can't right here though. Anchored by the pawn, and that might be the best square to go, but she comes this way. So again, this way might have been better, attacking the bishop first of all also, because if she could take that bishop, think about that, right? If she had went here, she's threatening to take the bishop, the pawn would have to take back, the king can come, this pawn can't get there, you trade it off, and you get with it, and you might be able to win this pawn, and then you know you might be winning, but she still got three against two over here, so it's still dangerous. So options, options, questions, right? But this is in-game play, guys. This is a 908 versus a 1519, and she's got to find a way to win or at least get a draw. Remember, the outcome of a game, a draw is a fine outcome. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, and you shouldn't have any problem with accepting a draw if it's a drawn game. Make it a draw, that's fine. So that's one of them. And it didn't end well, I believe, for white. Oh, look at this. Still going after the bishop. Could still. Can you take the... This is where you have to be able to calculate. Can I take that bishop? Because if I can, I just went from three versus two. Because if I could take that bishop and win that pawn, I'll be at two versus two. So if white takes, black takes, can I get to it? Can I get to it? Yes, I can. And there's a trick to know if you can get to it. And that's one of the things we'll talk about right now. So what you do is you look at the pawn inside box square, right? You could go this way, but that makes no sense because we're trying to figure out if the king can get to it. So I make a three by three square. Now it's white's move. If white can step into that three by three box, anywhere into that box, if white can step into here, 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 it doesn't matter. If white can step into the box, white can stop the pawn, basically take the pawn once he queens. Okay, you're not going to get to keep the queen. So all you have to be able to do is step into the box. I could step into the box. I'm there. And I can take it. So all you have to be able to do is step into the box. And that box can be eight by eight. I mean, it can, well, that doesn't make sense, but it could be seven, right? The pawn could be here, and then you make a box, and it's seven. Or let's see, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six squares going that way. Six squares going this way would be there. And so this is the box. So as long as if, if this pawn were the past pawn that we were worried about, all white would have to be able to do to say, can I catch that pawn, is to be able to, that white king could be sitting here if that pawn is sitting here and say, I'm in the box. And then here, 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 I can catch the pawn, believe it or not, I do. So. The box can be as large as you like. As long as you can step into the box, you can stop the pawn. All right. So that's that would have been that would have been good for white, right? White would have taken here, and now it's two against two. Granted, this king can start coming up, but now you're in the game. You're in the game, folks. And now you take what we call the opposition. So let's talk about the opposition again. The opposition is any time you could create an odd number of squares between your king and the opponent's king. So white just moved here, creating one square between. The reason opposition is important is because if you take the opposition and there are no other legal moves, that king has to give way. The king can no longer go forward. And because it has to give way by either going back or sideways, you can come forward. Yes, as long as there aren't any pieces in the way, definitely. We are talking about opposition. Um, well, actually, you could still take the opposition even if there was if there was a pawn here. You could still take the opposition. So let's do an example. Um, let's say white doesn't do that. And white goes here. Black goes here. White goes here. There's a pawn in the way. But that's still the opposition. This is still the opposition, and the king would still have to give way, right? The king cannot go forward. So the king would have to go sideways or back. And if it goes sideways, which it can't now because the pawn is actually helping, besides the king doing this, um, you still get to go forward. And by forward, it doesn't mean straight. I just mean any square forward. So if we back up to this position, white takes the opposition. Let's say no other pawn moves illegal. No other pawn moves illegal right now. The king goes here. Then your king could go here. Now, it can't because of the pawn, but you get the I'm, I'm, We'll go over this without the pawns in a way. But the opposition is critical because if you can get the opposition, you stop this king from moving forward. Um, catching the, yes, pass pawn. Yes, yes, definitely. You have to be able to step in the box 
and get there without another piece in your way. So sometimes your own pawn, very good LNP, sometimes your own pawn can get in the way and keep you from getting to that pawn. So when we talked about stepping in the box, yeah, I, yes. If you have pieces in the way, you have to go around them, that increases the number of squares you have to hit. So yes, definitely, definitely. We're talking about stepping in the box with a clear line to the queening square. Yes, if you have to step around or go through or have a check in between, or just one of your own pieces, even a pawn in the way, it can, yeah, you can lose the game. All right, so that's the opposition. And the opposition, just like the box, can be all the way across the board. So if I start here and you start there, that's seven, well, that's six squares in between. That's an even number. So whoever goes first can create the opposition by creating five squares. One, two, three, four, five squares in between. You have been said to take the opposition even all the way across the board. And it plays out that you keep going forward that you'll keep the opposition if you want to, and therefore you'll get to push forward. And the exercise we do, I'll show it to you, uh, even though I know it doesn't always show up really great, a board editor, yeah, it doesn't show up great at all. But with a board editor, the idea is if I clear the board, we do a little exercise, and I'll just show it to you all the way over here. And we say, can you get your king, can you get this king to take one of these two pawns? Or just take the square, right? Occupy the square. So usually in the exercise, you'll put a, like a white pawn there. Um, but it doesn't matter because right we're not worried about taking which is just an exercise can i get my king to hit one of those squares and if i have the opposition the answer is yes if i do not have the opposition the answer is no so to prove it if white has the opposition white can go forward and take the opposition black can go well uh, i'm just going to hang out here right I'm, i don't want i don't want to i'm going to wait one two three four squares i could take the opposition three squares White can go on and come forward, and white can go good. I just took the opposition. Remember, you can't go forward, so you have to go sideways or backwards. If you go sideways this way, I get to go this way. Right? And if you say, oh, I'm going to get back in front, I take the opposition again. You move this way, I can move this way. And now the best you could do is that. I take the opposition again. And remember, you could go, you can, we're even playing with the king could go on top. So the king could go there, but ah, I got to it. I'll have to get to one of them, right? All I have to do is be able to get to one of them. And why does this matter? This is how you're going to queen a pawn most times. When you have a king and queen, I mean a king and a pawn against a king, the opposition is how you end up queening a pawn. So as you just saw, I could force that. But if I'm, if I'm white, and I'm sorry, if black gets to go first and, and black gets to take the opposition, then guess what? White can never get to those pawns. I'll go here. No, you won't. I'll go here. No, you won't. Here? Nope. I'll go back. Okay. Go back. I'll go here. No, you won't. Uh, I'll go here. No, you won't. I'll be tricky. I'll go here. Okay. I'll still take the opposition. And now I can keep you trapped back here on the last row forever because I have the opposition. All right. Hopefully that's clear as mud. No problems there. Let's see. Let's go back to where we were. Oops. Went too far. All right, so that was a game that ended in an end game. Let's check another one because, again, eight of your games ended in real end games. Oh, let's jump to like move 20. And we're still not, I mean, you're in it, you're still in a middle game, really. You got too many pieces, too many dynamics, too many things going on. We got to get to an end game. So we trade off a whole bunch of stuff. We'll look at all this stuff, and we're down to queen and king. I mean, queen and king against queen and king. Now, this is an end game, but it's a weird kind of end game. Because the queens are so dynamic and you have one for each side, let's say, um, let's ask the question, who's winning? Because remember, you can't checkmate with just a queen, right? And you can't checkmate um, with a king by itself. So neither one of these are going to get, well, you could checkmate with just a king, queen if the king is back rank mate because he's trapped, right? But I'm saying if there's open spaces for them to run. Black is winning, Chris, by a lot, right? By a lot. So you have to think logically, what is my best hope? My best hope is to get a draw. What's the best way to get a draw? It's not to take off all the pieces because now I'm down to two pawns for white against five for black. If I trade queens, black wins easily. So black's job is to see, can I line up a check at the same time attacking the queen protected by a pawn 
if I can force a trade of queens, I win. I flat out win. Game over. Um, but white has to say, I don't want to trade queens, and I want to just check this king perpetually forever. So I'm going to start looking for checks and keep looking for checks. Right? I just want to keep checking this king. Uh, I don't even want to snatch pawns. <laughs> I just want to chase the king. By the way, the queen here for black would be mate. So I said, you know, you can't check mate with a queen alone. And that's the pawn is in the way, right? If that pawn wasn't there, that wouldn't be checkmate. So it's not alone, but okay. So uh, white wants to just keep checking black, but black wants to get to a point where he can put his queen in front. Now, you got to be careful. If black, if white were able to go here, he'd actually win your queen. So while white might look like all he's doing is trying to chase your king, uh, you might get away with things like this and trying to skewer the queen. Now, it doesn't work because you get this move to block. But then, you know, you want to keep checking, right? Now, you could take a pawn. We said you really shouldn't take the pawn. Um, and I still don't think you should take the pawn because you may run, again, run into the situation like check here. And, you know, you got to be careful. Where do I go? Where do I go? Um, because he's going to try his best to say check in a way that makes you take. And even though he loses another pawn, he should win because he has a passed pawn and you don't. Right? So what's a passed pawn? A passed pawn is when you have a pawn with no, um, uh, no, uh, none of the opposite colors pawns either in front of you or next to you. And the next to you, I mean ahead of you, right? Because if I had a white pawn here, that wouldn't be a passed pawn. I mean, this would still be a passed pawn because there's no pawns ahead of them. So passed pawns, good rules. We talk about we we taught you principles and concepts during the opening. The principles and concepts during the end game are a lot alike uh, with the opening in the sense that you can learn the rule, memorize the rule, the concept, the rule, and then use it. So a simple concept in the end game is passed pawns want to be pushed. It's that simple. Push. Oh, I'm going to go win this pawn. Push. I'm going to go win this pawn. Push. I take the pawn. Push. I'm going to I'm going to queen my pawn. Push. And then once you get your queen, then you can survey the land and decide what to do. Past pawns want to be pushed. Okay? Past pawns are worth a lot. Okay? A past pawn could be worth a knight or a bishop because they're going to have to kill their knight or bishop to take your past pawn. Past pawns are valuable. So here's a quiz question for you guys, and we're not even halfway looking through all of your endgames, but in a, qu a quiz for you, um, we're going into an endgame. Would you rather have a bishop or three pawns? And let's say the three pawns are not um, tripled on top of each other. Yeah, you, Chris, you're sharp today, man. You're, you're on top of it. You want the three pawns. Do you want two pawns or the bishop? That's all you get. Do you want two pawns or the bishop? We already did three pawns. Come on, Spock, you're behind. Depends on the position? Disagree, Chris. Two pawns or the bishop? Flavio says two pawns. All right, la last quiz question. Do you want one pawn or the bishop? One pawn or the bishop? You guys are wrong. You want the pawn. So, weird question it seems like. Let's talk about that. The reason you want one, two, or three pawns, or four pawns, or five pawns, the reason you want the pawn, <laughs> yes, yes, you missed out because you're delay. You didn't get to answer it. So you want the pawns because the pawns can become a queen or a rook, and with that, you can win the game. You cannot win the game with a king and a bishop against a king. That's right. You cannot checkmate with a bishop alone. You cannot checkmate with a knight alone. So therefore, you want the pawns because then you have a chance. And you said it depends on the position. In a sense, it does. If I'm about to queen that pawn and your bishop can't take the queening square and it's my turn, you would have said I want the pawn because it'll become a queen. But even without that, even if the bishop has a chance to take off your pawn at some point, 
You want the pawn because it has the only winning chances. The bishop can't win by itself. So one pawn, I still want the pawn. Two pawns, I want the pawns. Connected pawns, I want the pawns. Not connected pawns, I want the pawns. So we're always looking for what gives us the possibility of a win versus the best we're going to uh, hope for is a draw. And if all I have is a bishop, the best I'm going to hope for is a draw. All right. So we're going to want to get the pawns. So pawns are very, very valuable. And when you get, let's check another end game. So here's another end game with Lula again. And this is good enough. I get lucky. I just jumped to a square. I actually wrote down, I actually looked at all these games and, and analyzed and seen which ones get to interesting end games. And so in this one, Leonard again is playing Lula. And Leonard has this pawn under control. Looks like he's a goner. And uh, Black said, well, I'm going to go protect this pawn, but gave up this one. So it looks pretty clear that, right, you should get a pass pawn. And then what do pass pawns want to do? They want to push. They want to push. So your idea is that you have to, so, and based on what I just told you, that isn't the best move, right? The best move would be to push the pass pawn. So first of all, think about it. Um, Leonard is at 15, 13. So even at 15, 13, we could do better at end games. So why block here when notice, remember, what do I want to do with the king? I want to limit the king. So I could have kept the king inside this box for a long time. And comes after. Guys, got to hold on a second. Um, I got to do that phone call I told you about. And I believe you guys. Oh, sorry. It's not. No, I guess it's not the phone call I need. Or maybe it is. But here is our end game here. And so I've set up a position with pawns and kings. And so right now, if you don't mind, I'd like um, Chris and Irving or Flavia. You need to be on lead chess because neither one of you are at the moment. If you guys would go to Lee Chess and join this uh, study I invited you to, it's called End Games. There's no clock. Um, just try to play and try to win the game. So whoever wants to do that. Hey, M.A. Yeah, you missed a lot, but, uh, you know, you can always watch that part later. So um, if one of you, Flavio, it looks like you are actually, yeah, you go. Flavio and Chris, uh, just one of you pick white. Flavio, why don't you be white? Chris, you be black. And you're going to um, just move the pieces and you can move each other's pieces. So be careful because it's just a, stu it's a study. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, that is not my airline calling. So that's a little aggravating because they're... They are, and they haven't yet. All right, honey. All right, so I'm still waiting for that phone call. And it's okay that you guys haven't done anything, because guess what? That was a false alarm. I thought that was who, who was on the phone. Let's come back to here for the moment, and maybe we'll catch Modern Ancient up where we're at. So this rook is already limiting that king to just these nine, or sorry, uh, 12 times, right, 12 squares. So why move it? We want to keep it there. Pass pawns want to be pushed. And you might say, oh, well, he's going to attack me. Okay, now I'm attacking him, and I'm still keeping the king out. So what's going to happen, guys? The king's going to come up. Now, I can just push, like I said. I could just push. King can come up. I can protect. And now what? King's got no more good squares. Trading off this pawn wouldn't do him any good. And so now you're thinking, well, i got to move the rook. i got to get the rook in the game. And you could, and that's okay. And I can, I can just expand. I can get my king into the game. And have fun but past pawns create so much pressure that the opponent's got to do something about it so another option here is just right check because it's protecting me so go away king and so now the king can go away or try to hang out so then we could keep pushing pawns because past pawns want to be promoted so easy win actually easy to go through it and get your win in this game let's check the next one, this one's a little higher level uh, players. This one is Sudakis, who at the time was 1242, gained a lot of points during the tournament, against Leonard again with 1520. I'm going to jump to move 24, still not at the end game yet. Trades off a ton of stuff. And now we have a rook and a knight against a rook. So how do you, how do you finish this game? So I also look and I say I have four pawns. Yeah, two of them are doubled, but I have four pawns versus E2, they're isolated. Everything is, my pawns are ugly, except I have a lot more than my opponent, and more importantly, I have the knight. 
So I was about to tell you before was when you're ahead, when you're ahead in material, you want to trade off the heavyweights, the material. So right now white goes here, right? Why? No reason. Again. Now the good news is white was keeping the king out of the game. And white actually had this pawn, but then black would get this pawn. But why do any of that? Why not just come here, trade off the king, I mean the rooks, and now these two pawns will um, occupy these two pawns' attention. And then I have four pawns and a knight. Four pawns and a knight. In fact, I can just sack the knight right away. I could just sack the knight right away and say, let's do another one. And if white, if black takes, you have three connected pawns. I don't even have to put my king anywhere near there. And I'll show you why. King, king over here, and you could just pick your pawn, push any pawn you want, right? First of all, the king can't come forward, so it's just annoying. Can't go here. But even if you went here, you say, okay, and the king goes here. And you go here, and you say, okay. And let's say you even give away a pawn. Let's, let's, I can't take it off the board, but let's say this pawn is even here. It doesn't matter, um, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that pawn is going to stay out of the game. Now, this king can come out and just eat these pawns at his leisure. Why? Because this king can never take that pawn. And it doesn't matter if the pawns were back here. The king can never take the backward pawn on a two-pawn chain if it's just king and pawns. Because if you ever take this pawn, this pawn runs and becomes a queen. And it works way back here. If you have two pawns here and the king takes this one, then this one moves here and the king cannot catch. Right? Every move, you're, you're going to be a move behind every time. And I've watched beginners just chase the pawn all the way down until it becomes a queen and goes, oh, I didn't catch it. As if, you know, he thought that maybe one of these moves, maybe one of these moves, I'll be able to catch. No, you can't catch the queen. You, you can't catch the pawn. So you can never take that backward pawn. So again, uh, we're talking about, right, uh, Sadukas, 1242 right now has an easy win. This should be, I mean, as easy as giving away the rook, giving away the knight, take one move uh, moment to get himself three pass pawns. And if he says, no, no, I'm not doing that, yeah, you can either bring up your king if you really want to, take the opposition, and say, I don't care because I can start pushing this pawn. And remember the box too, right? I have three, four squares. So here's the box. The king can get into the box, but he can't go straight because it'll check because of the pawn. The pawn will check. So the king can step into the box, and now I know my king is going to catch your pawn. But do I care? Because now I have what I, what do I, have? I have? I have two pass pawns, right? And you could go, aha, you can't. Now, I cannot push this pawn. He gets to take that one and that one. I cannot push that pawn. But I could come after this one. Why? Because I could take the back pawn because this is not a passed pawn. There's a pawn on either side, so this pawn is not a passed pawn. So I can take this pawn. He could push. I can go after him. He could push and give it away. All right? If he doesn't give it away, I get to take it. I can then come over and take off this pawn later. And then I can push and queen this. I never have to move these pawns at all. But if he ever takes here, you know, thinking, oh, I'll get rid of these pawns, it's too late. And from here, what are we going to do? We're just going to keep the king from ever getting to his pawn to help. And we don't even have to take the pawn. His king can go play games. We're just never going to take the pawn. We can wait. We can wait him out. Uh, by the way, the pawn goes this way, so I can say check here. King can go here and hope that I'm going to stalemate him. Right? How could I stalemate him, guys? I could just push the king one and I stalemate. Look, the king would take away that square. So that's a great move by black, hoping for the king to come after you. But remember what I taught you? Just take away the whole lane. And don't get into this that trap where you might get stalemated. And now the king has to run. And as you know, you can actually go right in front of him because we're in the last rank. And wherever he goes, is checkmate. So that would have been a so much cleaner, faster checkmate, right? So let's see again. But instead, look what happened. We went... Went here, went here, take a pawn, go after another pawn. And look, we don't know what we're in. We're going to move around some more. We're, think of all this that all these moves, right, that we're just possibly might fall into a problem. Might, well, what black fell into the problem. But all of that was unnecessary. If you feel comfortable in your end games, you're just going to say, 
hey, I can count. I've got four against two, two against two. I'm going to get the rooks off the board. And when you're ahead in material, trade pieces. When you're ahead in material, get rid of pieces, hopefully by trading. You don't need to go down the exchange for that for that purpose. And don't do it so don't be trying to trade so badly that you get checkmated because you're not thinking about what's going on. But this is forced, right? Check. That's forced. I could take the rook. He's got to take back. That's forced. That's a forced trade. I could take here. He's got to take back. Right? Simplify the game so you have even less on the board. Now, when you're ahead, trade pieces, not pawns. Why not pawns? Remember I asked you guys, what would you rather have, three pawns or a bishop at the end game, if that's all you had? And all of you said three pawns. And then you said, oh, good question, LMP. I'll get there in one second. Um, and I told you, and you agreed, that you'd rather have two pawns than the bishop. You'd rather have one pawn than the bishop. So if I trade off all the pawns at the end of the game, I have no pawns, but I have a bishop. And if my opponent kept two pawns, I'm losing. But if I keep even one pawn with my bishop, if I can keep one pawn with my bishop, then that pawn eventually might become a queen and I can win. So I do want to trade off the pieces so that I have, the, I have a bishop and they don't. But if I have no pawns, I still don't win. Cannot, MA, that's right, that's right, that's what we covered. Cannot mate with a bishop alone. Now, what happens if you're down material? So your opponent has the bishop and you don't have the bishop. You want to keep all the pieces you can because you need them to kill your opponent's pawns. And that's your mission. Get rid of all of his pawns. If you can, even if you have to trade them, if you get rid of all the pawns on the board and they're still up a bishop, right? Maybe a bishop and a rook against a rook. You trade off the rooks, they only have a bishop, it's a draw. And remember, when you're down material, be happy for the draw. When you're down a, a, three, a point piece, be happy for the draw. But if they're not good at end games, you might win that end game, right? Okay, but that's why we're learning end games. Because there's probably nothing more frustrating than to be ahead in the game, be ahead material, and then lose the game in the end game when you should have won the game. All right, so there's, your, there's another example. Like I said, we had eight. So I'm going to show you one more, and then I need to go over some techniques before we have our tournament for tonight and you guys start working on endgames. Definitely don't want to start here. So here we go. Oh, this is already down to um, two rooks. And then we blunder, right? We have blunders that go on. And, and you'll see it right away. There you go. Take my rook, please. But right now, who's winning? Three versus four pawns, but they're doubled. So it's almost like they don't have an extra pawn. Three pawns versus one. Who's winning this game, guys? White is winning this game. Now, white had to take here. Black should just take back, which he does. So now we only have two pawns versus one. But white is still winning. Um, white is still winning in the sense that he has um, the extra pawn. They have an extra pawn over here. But this pawn is a potential pass pawn. So I told you pass pawns want to be pushed. The other thing is if you have a pawn that's a potential pass pawn, an outside pawn, so this pawn is hitting straight at this one, and this one is only hitting diagonally at this one, the pawn you push first out of these two is the one on the outside because that way this pawn can't stop you. You can always take it. If you push this one first and then this pawn gets pushed, this pawn keeps that pawn from ever getting there because you'll lose it. So how, do, how does um, white need to play this game? White needs to be happy to trade off pieces because he has more pawns. If he trades off to all the pieces, he has a king and two pawns against a king and a pawn over here. Remembering that he has four, but it's double. So he needs to figure out how to get his rook maybe over here and threaten these pawns. Maybe he's get his rook over here and trade off rooks. He's got to find a way to trade off the rooks. And he just and I think he was maybe even thinking that when he blundered the rook. All right, let's go to the in games class that I've set up. I have 20 chapters in here. And we've already talked about king plus queen, how to, how to checkmate. We've talked about king plus rook, how to checkmate. We talked about king and two rooks and how to checkmate. I've shown you the pawns position. That's kind of fun. And we started the game, but we sorry, we're not going to get to finish it. Um, but there's a magic position we want to reach. The magic position when we have a king and a pawn, just a king and a pawn against a king, right? How do we win the game? This is the magic position. 
if you get to this position, no matter whose move it is to go, white should win. Okay, this is the magic position. I'll show you. White goes first. White can go here. Black can take the opposition. By the way, the simple rule, the simple rule here is for black to stay in front of the pawn, stay in front of the pawn, unless you're taking the direct opposition. And you not only want to stay in front of the pawn, but you want to get as close to the pawn as possible. So black, white goes here, right? And we haven't taken the opposition because there's no straight line, but if you count one, two, three, four, five, right? Black can take the opposition. But if black comes up, he actually gives away the opposition. So a tricky move black can do here is go here, one, two, three, four, five, he just took the opposition. And if white goes here, then we could take the opposition, one, two, three, because we stole the opposition. It didn't, white didn't have to let you have it, but it doesn't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because white has a move. So now black took the opposition and white wants the opposition. So white can move his pawn and say, ha, huh, now it's your move as if, as, as if I put my king here, taking away the opposition from you. So we've gotten it back the opposition, basically. All right, um, my computer's reconnecting for Lee Chess. I'm hoping it's Lee Chess that's kind of flaky right now, not me. So anyway, so the king, I, I just took back the opposition, so the king has to move away. And now I have to wait for it to wake up. Oh, you too? Good. It's, it's, are you hoping me or Lee action? I'm hoping that's what it is and not me. Um, we do have a tournament. Uh, let me check on what time the tournament's going to start in 10 minutes. All right, so I do have a tournament for you guys. If you haven't signed up yet, please go sign up for the tournament. If you're not a member of the uh, group, then you need to join the group and the team for live stream. All of you should play in this. It's unrated. It's an unrated tournament, I'll tell you that. I'm not gonna tell you any other secrets, um, but it's unrated. Yeah, and hopefully Ali Chess does not like do this during the tournament. Yeah, I just refreshed my screen and it seems to be working. All right. No, it's not. It's still not connected. I don't know what's going on with Lee Chess right now. It's acting, yep, it's reconnecting again. All right, so I will tell you, though, that the idea is for you to take the opposition to push the enemy king to the side. And there's a lot I got to teach about opposition, and uh, the time flew. And so if Lee Chess reconnects, we'll get to work on it. Oh, the tourney is good. Yeah, you guys should be able to sign up for the tourney. Please do that. Let's see. Um, I have no one showing it signed up, but that doesn't mean you haven't. It just means I can't see it yet because, you know, uh, Lee Chess is acting flaky. So please get signed up in there. Yeah, no, my, my even on this page, is, it's, it's uh, reconnecting for me, even on the uh, tournament page. But as long as you guys can sign up for the tournament, hopefully it won't be a problem. That'd be, that'd be good news. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. All righty, all righty. So I had a lot of things I want to talk about tonight. Let me just go over my list and see if I missed anything while we're waiting for this to con connect. Uh, so one was, it was interesting to me that more than half of your games went to end games. Out of 19 games, 11 went to end games. 11 went to end games. Now three of them, to be fair, were not fair end games, right? There were blowouts, uh, so the game was just a destruction. Uh, but there were end games. Uh, but I, I, even if we throw those away, those are three end games that were overwhelming force. We had eight games that ended without getting to the end game. So that means we had eight games that got to the end game and was a classic, I gotta know my end game, how to win. Now uh, the leech of server's not good, hopefully it's tonight, not every night. Uh, it's been pretty good for the last six months. Hopefully it'll get itself going. I don't. I don't. I didn't set up the tournament in um, Chess.com, so I can't just go there to. We could go there and play, but I can't go there to have you play in the tournament, which I'm really excited about you playing in the tournament. So we'll give it some more time. It has over 10 minutes, so hopefully it, it'll get itself back together. So going over again, uh, the things that we were trying to achieve. I'm gonna actually see if I just open up a new Lee Chess. I'm liking this uh, this tool, by the way. This uh, Opera GT is pretty sweet. 
I, I am I, I gotta admit I'm definitely liking that all right so I want to go to end games class all right well maybe this and look at that even brought us back to the same page and it's still not moving so funny yeah funny that's still not moving <laughs> and it still says reconnecting all right um so that's one it's important to know when you have when you're winning the game especially going into the end game you have to know if you're winning or losing the game and if you're losing the game then you can try to draw the game and you have to know how to draw the game but a lot of times your opponents won't know what to do with their pawns and give them all away i i've i've played in games like that i've seen games like that and it's sad when you're winning the game and you end up giving away the game because you didn't know how to play the end game that's one of the saddest things it just makes me sad um and i guess you guys can understand that we went over king plus rook checkmate king plus queen checkmate king plus two rooks checkmate now i didn't go um, over a king plus a queen and a rook checkmate but you can treat the queen just like it's a rook and do the ladder and the nice thing about using the queen for the ladder is remember when the king can come over and chase your rook a little bit can't do it can't do it with the queen because it can't get close enough to the queen to chase uh, so that's nice and now we're working on the opposition and remember the definition of the opposition is when you can make it an odd number of squares between you and your opponent's king and so in this situation we have on the board the fact that you can move this pawn that you can do a stall move right you can't pass in chess so right now black took the opposition by putting an odd number of squares in between and we call this by the way remember we have an absolute pin when you pin something to the king this is called direct opposition straight line right especially when a pawn is involved on the file not on the side you can have sideways opposition your king your king could be here and my king could be here and we have sideways opposition it's not useful if we're trying to stop a pawn not useful at all if we're trying to stop a pawn uh, it's useful in other things like i'm trying to keep your king from getting over here or as you know i'm trying to checkmate you and i want to move my rook and keep sliding you this way but Direct opposition when we're trying to queen a pawn is essential. It's critical. And because I've not moved my pawn, I can now move my pawn and thereby gain the opposition because now it is your move when there was an odd number of squares in between. That's the other way to think about it, right? The person with the um, opposition is the one that doesn't have the move. Oh, the server is down. No fun. No fun. Um, and I cannot set up, a, I have no clue how to set up a tournament in chess.com. We can always go to chess.com and play games, as I said, but we want to look at end games. So that's kind of a, a, of a downer that their server is down at the moment. But, um, so puzzles we probably can't do here either, right? Because the server's down. Oh, who else can we go look at for some end games? Let's see about chess.com. You know, this is nice. Oh, chess of bull. Oh, yes, I do use Chessable, so that, that came up when I searched on chess dot, uh, Chessable. Let's see, I don't even think I've ever signed in on my new computer, or have I? Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba I don't remember if I've signed in. Where do I sign in on chess.com? If I hit play, will it sign me in? It says, uh, allow to show notifications. Uh, sure, uh, why not? and uh learn Ooh, let's see if they have puzzles vision videos articles nice stuff though oh, very interesting uh and i don't know how to do a i don't see where i can also do a blank board oh here's my login and yep i've got to go find my login for chess.com because i don't have that handy i don't believe nope 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 don't have it handy it doesn't remember me uh, so I can go look it up if I have to. What a drag, guys. What a drag. Oh, you can help with that, Chris? All right. Which part? The uh, setting up a tournament in chess.com? Uh, I can go find my login if I have to. Uh, you know, I, I can figure it out probably. Uh, let's try one more. We'll just try it. Oh, you created a club already. You're the man. I'm telling you, Chris, you're awesome. Seriously. Okay. I still got to remember how to log in. So I believe I, I believe I changed my name in here to Tiberian64. I'm pretty sure I did. And I don't always remember what all the rules are for the passwords. Because if I did, 
it'd be easier to remember what my password is. Try one more, and nope, it says, uh, and I don't feel like doing the forget your password. That would take forever, too, for it to come up. Oh, look at that. Nice. Got a club, guys. Look at that. Chris set up a club for me, and I still need to go find But unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do what we needed you to do. Yeah, go, I could go find it. I'm going to have to go find my password. I didn't want to do that. All right. Um, but let's see. Let's see if I even click on the club. Chess clubs. Okay. But of course, it's going to say log in to join. And so I think it was Tiberian 60. See, and I think I changed my name even. So I'm not even 100% sure. Oh, sorry. That doesn't mean I had it right, though, right? That's always fun. No, oh, what is that? R298. C. Yeah, see, I didn't have it right. Yeah, it is 64. Yeah, I, I tried to change it to that, so I was happy that I could change it to that. Um, but I don't seem to remember my password. Yes, I did. This is so frustrating that uh, the server's down. That'll be the first time I've not been able to... Uh... Oh, okay, all right, all right. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to go get my other computer and see if I can find the actual login for this. What I miss? Anything exciting? Oh, no. Okay. I'd be shocked if that's what it is. But it might be. We'll try it out. Wow, that can't be it. But if it is, wow, <laughs> scary. All right, I'm in. Uh, let's see, are we in the tournament? I'm joining my own club. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I've been added to the club. All right, I guess we could play games tonight. Um, I do have a special thing for you guys to do, a special tournament. Um, unfortunately, as you know, Lee Chess is still down. The server's down. Um, technical difficulties at their end. So if you guys want to follow that link, um, we can all come and play in chess.com. Hopefully you guys have uh, something there also. Let's see. No events. So where do uh, super admin? 
Chris, you're the super admin. I don't know if you can make me a super admin also, but if you want to set up a, a tournament, that'd be great. So we can get people playing at least. Um, and then later you could show me how to, or just give me access to it so that I could set up a tournament. Yeah, they see, this is the problem when you have, uh, when you're, when you're uh, sometimes when you're monetized, right? I do like Lee Chess because I I, there's no ads all over the place. You don't have to look at ads. You get to chess play chess but hey it's a great site they do a lot of good things they have a lot of great tournaments oh i am a super admin awesome sauce and flavio too all right so can i create a tournament that's part of the question right so let's see if we can create a tournament um i have no idea how to do it here so i'm learning now myself upcoming live tournaments upcoming tournament legend yeah no i don't want any of those i just want to know how to start a tournament in our club and that doesn't look like the way to do it. Uh, no events scheduled. Uh, let's see, news, farm, notes, live matches. Go on live chess? Go on live chess. What time do you want? Oh, I don't care. 5-5? Five, five? That sounds good. Let's do 5-5. Five, five. Um, but live chess. I'm looking, Chris, for live chess. More? Uh, not under more. Not under today, right? Not under play, play, play. No, live chess. Okay, under live chess. Oh wait, that's just is that that's just playing though. That's is that how people like can challenge me though too? Is that how we could do one on ones if we? Oh, and I see tournaments. Nice. Oh, add a club tournament. Are you already doing it, Chris? I see. Go on live chess. Hover on play. Yep. And then you could go to a club tournament. Add a club tournament. Yep. A look at that, guys. You can make it and increment. Uh, start today start no not at 10 o'clock we want to start like in five minutes um rounds five okay this would be a swiss though we don't want a swiss we want an arena uh let's see monday night fun uh, let's see five minute time control and i don't see up oh, duration 30 minutes we can make it uh, 45 minutes 30 minutes okay fine we'll leave it 30 minutes doesn't look like i could do 45 minutes and minimum games now start date is today but yeah we don't want it at 10 o'clock either we would want it to be uh oh start time no that's what what do you do an increment you uh you could create a chris i'll just stop <laughs> you can show me how to do it later uh you could do custom time control uh, i see it five i see it okay well chris it's up to you do you want me to do it i'm i'm almost done i think I think, except the time is like flaky, right? I want the time to be nine, nine ten or something. Yeah, how about nine ten for thirty minutes? You can do. I deleted it. Okay, I'll finish then, hopefully. And it says something's wrong with that. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with that. Standard arena five five today, thirty minute duration. Does the time happen to be like the wrong time zone by any chance? Is that possible? Time is set in your time zone. So why is it not allowing me to create it? Because I made it, and I don't want it to, uh, let's say if I set an hour, it still doesn't let me do it. So it's got to think that it's like not enough time, right? Before it starts, yep, that's what it was. So if I start at 9.15, oh, it has to be at least five minutes away. Okay, so 14 allows me, 12, oh, yeah, 9.12 allows it even. 9-11 doesn't. Okay, 9-12, I'll create it, and we'll see if we get anybody that wants to play. Uh, but, yeah, I, I had such a neat thing set up for you guys. Um, we're going to work on end games. I really wanted to show you some really neat stuff, and I had a special tournament set up for you. Maybe we'll do it Friday. I guess i got to join my own tournament. We could probably do it Friday. Uh, that, that hopefully will work. I don't even know what my rating is on here, but hopefully it's not. Too ridiculous no it's not it's nice and low i'm only 1720 here the ratings definitely seem to be different between the two different uh, uh places so yes please if you're on if you also have a chess.com account if you don't you can get a free one uh, you don't have to pay for the premium um, and you could play in this tournament you could join our club and chris has put the link for the club and now i got two places that we could be doing tournaments and playing so that's kind of fun 
And Chris even put the tourney in. Chris, man, I'm going to just, I need to subscribe to you. I need to give you cheer bits and subscribe to you. Okay, you guys are playing on Lee Chess right now. Is Lee Chess back up? Is it back up by... <laughs> so we went through all this to create the tournament, and now Lee Chess is back up. So do we cancel this tournament and then let you guys have that tournament that I try to create? You guys should be able to join that other tournament. How about I just, I don't even know how I cancel this. How do I cancel this? Oh, I'm going to cancel. All right. But it was a good learning experience, and we're going to hopefully then be able to uh, use this in the future when we need to. All right. So four live stream in here. Chris and Fl Flavio are the only ones in here. I need you guys to join the tournament. Any of you guys that have hung out and, and put up with all the technical difficulties up to this point. Uh, so I'd love for you to join the tournament. I'm going to send out a, a flash right now to everyone in the club. And hopefully... you can join us. So MA, if you're still out there, if uh, whoever's out there, please join us for the uh, end game tournament. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll learn from it. We can watch this game going on while we wait and hope that others join. So they're not the only two playing in the tournament. That would be nice, guys. That would be nice. Let's see, just so you guys know, um, Flavio, as you can see on the screen, is black in this game and Chris is white. And this setup is where each team, each side has a little bit of an advantage of pawn majority against a pawn minority and then the kings. And we haven't talked a lot about this yet and time ran out. It was, this is like a fun, told you, end games are great. I'll just tell you straight up, end games are probably my favorite part of the game. And they're my favorite part of the game because they are so simple and, it, and at the same time so complicated. And if you play it right, you can, you, you're right there. There's just so few pieces. And you're like, oh, this should be easy. And it's not easy. Not easy at all. It's comp more complex than you would imagine, uh, even with just these little bit of pieces. Now, I carefully built this opening position using the uh, engine to tell me that it was an equal position. I wanted to make sure I had an equal position walking in. So the position was equal, white gets to move first, but I think it only gave it like a point zero something advantage that you get to move first. So it should still be an equal game for you guys. And you will change colors. You get to play more games and change colors. So we need more of you signing up. They're unrated, they're casual, so they won't even cost you. I'll join in. I don't want to, but I'll join in until we can get more players so we have an even number so no one's waiting. Thank you, LLNP, for joining in. Uh, Murph, if you want to join in, these aren't rated. They're endgame studies. You've done this already in class. You know what it's like. I don't even see Murph on right now, though, so that, that makes sense that he wouldn't be joining in. Uh, any new people, if you want to join, I'll put in the chat how you join the team. I love it. It tells me I have to follow the rules for... Um, for for chatting uh, but join the Lee Chess team if you join the Lee Chess team the full live stream I will let you in and then we'll go from there we're gonna be going over this more in depth on um, Wednesday I will review but I'll review some games but at the same time we will definitely be going back over these concepts in fact we'll probably spend another week going over King, uh, the opposition, and winning pawn versus king in games. All right, so LLMP and I get to play a game. We'll see how we do. Five plus five, uh, and, and the nice thing is it's, so look, I'm looking, right? That tells me there's four squares, so I can take the opposition by making it three squares. So I gotta be, I gotta think about how I'm gonna win this game too, but I, I was gonna tell you, so in the end game, Certain pieces need certain things. Kings, kings need to be active. Kings need to be active. So I didn't want to move forward because then he could take the opposition. Remember, he did a pawn move, so that would give him the opposition if I stepped forward. So I'm kind of stalling because I want him to step forward so I could take the opposition. The concept behind that. Tough games. Uh, but uh, again, end games are just so awesome because they are in essence clear and simple but not easy right they're clear and simple but not easy at all all right so 
he did well. He's moving his king. He looks like he wants to go over and attack that side. I can try to deal with this side. Um, he does have more pawns on this side, so I have that to deal with. I do want to get to the point where I could stop his pawns, and I'm going to actually... Uh, this is so scary. This is so scary, folks. This is so scary. What's the right answer even here? I'm not even sure. I need to practice this myself. I don't know. Let me edit our clock because I can do that on the fly now with my new computer. See, it's not the computer for sure. It is definitely um, Lee Chess that was down because the computer's rocking. Let's see if we can get a better image of our Think, oh, I'm not even moving the right one. I need to play with the clock. So let's go back to clock. There we go. And then we edit the clock. And make sure, oh, I was editing the wrong thing. Okay, boom, there we go. And then we're gonna move the clock down. Right behind my head. All right, feel better. All right, back to work. Oh, oh, back to work, he moved, he moved. He moved. All right, I'm just gonna be aggressive with the king. So um, kings need to be active. They need to. They want to play in the center of the board. I was thinking that his king was going to come over here. And now, which pawn do I push, guys? Remember, I pushed the one that has the potential to be a passed pawn. If I had pushed this pawn, he could push, and then we get trades. All right, so he's going to chase my king away a bit. So I'm going to move away a bit. He takes the opposition, but now I'm going to get these pawns closer. I think I have the edge now. I think I have a chance to get in. I'm going to have to take the opposition, guys. i got to take the opposition. And I'm not going to tell him what he should do. You know, he's got to figure that out on his own. We don't want to help him. Can't help him. Can't help him. It's too tight of a game. Too scary. Too scary. Ah, good, good, good. Look at him. Shoving that pawn forward um, is just is not friendly. I'm going to, I'm going to have to push. I'm going to have to push. I, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to give up now. Now, I'm going to count. If I put my pawn in there, here's my cube. Right? Here's my square. But if I put my pawn in there, he could step into the cube and he's going to catch my pawn. So, since he's going to catch my pawn anyway, I have to give it up. I have to give it up. Now, I want to get in here. But I can't even get in here yet because this king is still keeping my king out so if I push one more I should be able to at least get in here okay now my king can get in here now I gotta be careful ah, see I think he needed to push those pawns I think he needed to start making these pawns be uh, no he needed to push the pawns guys he needed to push the pawns he's letting me eat his pawns this is not good for him and now this is a win this is a win remember I don't even have to play with my pawns remember I told you that the pawns now that they're connected pawns, he can never take the back one. So I'm just going to go over here and just hang out because I don't even have to play. I could just wait. I could I could have actually moved here. That would have been fun, right? I could have done the two move there. That would have been kind of cool. Yep. Hey, Suda, Suda, are you here, my friend? My friend Suda here? Hey, yes, you are. Out for dinner, but I thought to quick stop by and wish you an awesome thing. Thank you. You're the man. You are the man. You're the man, you're the man, you're the man. Hey, King. Hey, we got a tournament going, King. You should join us. You need to join us, King. We have a tournament going. Join us, my friend. Join us. Please join us. Come. Come. We're working on end games this week. So you might have to go back and check up on some of it, but we're going to introduce, we're going to be still doing more things next week because there's so much to do. So again, I'm, I'm not going to uh, play with this yet. I want him to find, and I, you know, I'm going to limit him a little faster. Limit him faster. He's got to go to the back rank, right? He can't stay here. 
Hey, thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the biz, Suda. I appreciate it. That's so nice of you. That is so nice of you. Yeah, King. Well, you need to join. This is this is where you're going to learn how to play end games. That's what we're doing tonight. So join us for end game study. That's that's what we're doing. If you're bad at end game, so now I'm going to take away this row. I'm just going to try to keep him over here. Remember, I'm just going to keep things simple. We can pre-move that one. Doesn't matter if he comes back, and we can. And now, when he comes here, we can pre-move that one. All right, excellent. Let's see. All right, Flavio's in. I can uh, bounce out now, guys. Chris is in. I'll pause out and watch you guys play. If Flavio unpauses, I don't know if he had to leave. Flavio, are you gone or are you back here? Because if you're here, I can pause out. That way there's four without me. All right. I didn't, oh, oh so that diamond membership for practicing puzzles has to be in chess.com because everything is free on Lee Chess. Right? I mean, you can definitely do that on Lee Chess without paying anything. So you don't need a special membership on Lee Chess to practice puzzles. That's the neat thing I like about that. But all righty then. Look at this game. Nice game, nice game. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and see if. Um... Ooh. Somebody dropped a pawn. Black is looking very good in this game. Chris, you, you, you I agree. Need some practice. And Chris has just learned the lesson of opposition, so it's not fair, really. Let's see if he can still finish it, though. Don't give up, Chris. That pawn is... That's all oh, you gave up. That pawn still has chances. That pawn can still go down. You still want to get that pawn to go all the way down. Oh, good. Okay, we have four in. So Flavio and uh, LLMP are playing. Awesome sauce. And we see the opposition being taken by Black. And this is the side where Black has the more pawns, so that he should be trying to cause havoc over here. Remember which pawn needs to go first, right? Guys, look, which one is the potential pass pawn? That'll tell you which one that needs to be moved first. So this is interesting, because if Black goes too far away, White might be able to get in, right? But right now, Black could stymie White. So this would be the move, guys. That's, that's an okay move. But I love this move, because this move just stops that pawn dead in its tracks. It goes nowhere. But now black can do this and start doing the same thing over here. But I love this move. This move is great. This move would mean that if he ever goes here, you take and you push, and you're going to um, actually queen probably before. Let's see, that'd be one, two, three, four, yep. So that would be the move I'd be looking for, for me, for sure. And see, now white gets the move in, and now, so this move is not possible anymore, but that's okay. Black should be playing over here. So me, I would have waited. It's too close. You could get into that box. You don't need to do this right now. You can wait. You can wait. You have to wait till he tries to do something. In the meantime, you could have gotten this one going. So this will be exciting to see how they do. Sure he can. Oh, you mean in this setup? I, I just did the last game, King. I, I just won. You can. And actually, the uh, computer ranks it as equal, and that means once White has, because White has the first move, it's still equal. It's definitely, definitely winnable. So that's the that's interesting. It's interesting. It's wrong, guys. That's that's why it's wrong. Which one was supposed to be pushed? We talked about it. The outside, the one with the potential. The one with nobody directly in front of him. So LLMP pushed the wrong pawn, and um, Flavio stepped right in there and said, thank you very much. So again, why do I love end games? Because they are so simple, but you make one mistake, and you can lose the game. One mistake. So if this was the move, and then this move, he's, he can't, um, Flavio can't stop it. He can trade it, and then Flavio can't stop it. And if he goes over to try to stop it, he gets to take this one and then this one. But because he pushed the wrong pawn, and by the way, look at this, 
he also pushed the wrong pawn. This would be the one to go. We don't want to do this one. Now it does lock it in, but now the king, yeah, the king has to stay around, but you know. So that was a mistake. Oops, sorry guys. Didn't mean to do that. I meant to get to the position. All right, so we get here, and this is this is bad. Now this pawn is free. That's a free that's free candy, guys. You, we're giving away free candy. I don't understand the free candy. Now I could understand because you get to go here. Then if you take, then he gets to go here, and you're thinking, oh, okay. But then he goes here, and he can't get by, right? Because he still has no pass pawn. So this might work out for him, but it feels like it's going to work out to be a draw, because. Black can't go too far. Black can't go this way because, right, see, he has to come over here and play. And he could just keep going back and forth. I don't, yeah. I, to me, this is now a draw. Black missed his chance. Not that, remember, it's it's supposed to be a draw position. Just goes here. See, you, you guys watching that? Right? You don't have to give it up. Black has no moves. Just has to go here. Stay, stay steady. Don't get flustered. Yep, very good, Flavio. Flavio finds the right move. Very good. Um, is there any time limit? Yeah, it's it's a five and five, I think. Yeah, it's five plus five, casual. Yeah, they play. Yeah, it came out to be a draw. Uh, I think each of them made mistakes that the other one didn't take advantage of, though, Chris. So that's the thing, right? Do you know your end game? And can you, and in this one, you have to figure it out. And it's so simple. It's just pawns. Guys, it's just pawns. But you got to be able to figure it out. And now what? Ooh, now he has to go in and protect. See, somehow we lost that thread. I don't know how we, we let this happen. Um, Black got into a position where he let this happen. And now Black kind of has to hang around. White's going to do this, and we're going to get into this position. Uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting. And now, yep, and here we go. But this one is so weak. I mean, this one is so weak. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Oh, comes down. Oh, what did you do? No, you have to come this way, and then this way, and then this way. Went the wrong way, guys. Did you see that? That, that this move, black has to go here, 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 take here, step to the side, queen and it'll queen probably before this one but he went here now he still can do this though he can still do it he can still do it guys he has to come here and here there you go he found it he has to, he has potential yeah yeah chris low amount of people tonight it happens pawn pushes take pawn pushes move out of the oh 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 nice nice stops him from taking and now the now you and you're dead See, if, I think if he had, I don't know, I was thinking if he came here first, when he took here, you would have been taking, so then you'd be good. I might have miscounted that, but let's see. If back here, boom, boom, if he had went here, he could have taken, could have went here. Yeah, see, he steps here, you get to take. Yeah, that one move, that one move, this one move made him lose a tempo. He lost one tempo, and that tempo is going to lose the game. That one tempo is going to lose the game, guys. Wow. One small tempo, and he had a draw or a win. All right. Ooh. I, I, well, I, I feel like asking what you're eating tonight. Yep. I like it that Black's still waiting to see if he can um, get a stalemate, because you never know. But, yep, nope, didn't happen didn't happen all right oh we have one two three four five but i'm i'm sitting out so we still have only four it should still pair some more people together i think krish hasn't played flavio flavio paused though so that's going to make it harder anyone else wants to get in remember you know how I, i'm gonna while you guys play i'm going to call the uh the airlines who did not return my call I don't know what's taking them so long.
All right, we'll try calling them again. Let's see. Oh, we have a game going on. Sorry, guys. Yes, yes. All right, so now we have a pass pawn. So that's, that's really dangerous for black in this game. White has a pass pawn, which means this king could just go and fight. And because black has to stay around, so white should win this game because they allowed this to happen. Let's see how that happened. Okay, there we go with that. That's fine. And now black has to take. Black has to take. And then the king has to do that. Right? Yes. I'm calling about a flight. Well, that's ridiculous, guys. The wait time is uh, three hours. Yeah, for an airline, it's three hours. So I'm gonna have to just do it online and have them figure out the money part of it later. Um, but no worries, I'll take care of that in about a half an hour. All right, so uh, Flavio got paused out, but he's back. He says uh, it's been it's getting kind of buggy right now, which is, at least it's up, I guess. So. What do you guys think about this playing an end game tournament where you actually have an end game situation set up and you get to practice? I hope you like it because next week we got even a more complicated one with more pieces on the board. Uh, maybe I'll even make some from your end games uh, that you played in the game last Saturday, last Monday. But right now, let's see what happens with this one. Let's see if they're learning. Uh, we've, we've been trying to talk. So we want these, right? We want to grab the opposition. Uh, you need to move this guy forward. You need to do that. Um, this is okay, but this is probably better. And can you get the opposition? There's four in between. So yes, he could take the opposition right now. Taking the opposition is critical. That and pushing the correct outside pawn. So LLMP, you missed it. Oh, you're playing in the game, so you're probably not listening. I know you turn it off while you're playing so you don't get help. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm figuring that I'm figuring it's uh, COVID is the delay on the phone, maybe. All right, correct pawn at least. I'm, I'm liking that. Now you're going to need support for it. So let's get the support going. Let's see if LMP learned from his game with Flavio. Because he missed his chance with his game with Flavio. Not that one should be a forced win, but it should be a draw because this should pull this guy over. That should pull that guy over. So right now he can move here. He doesn't have to worry about it. He's still inside the box. He's gonna be able to get back and he's good to go. Up to him, he, he can pull back, he can pull back this way. He has two choices. This one I'm thinking is more dynamic. His king is in the, more towards the center. Um, and if he pushes here, he doesn't have to worry. He can keep doing his thing. Because again, if he pushes, he's inside the box. Even, even if he takes and he pushes, he's inside the box. Very good. He did learn from the other game with Flavio. Now he can take. He could have also pushed. And now he doesn't have to go towards this pawn, guys. Notice, he can wait till the pawn pushes again. Uh, See, you, you say things and they just aren't listening because they've turned off their, their um, speakers so they don't hear me, right? That's, that's fair. We want, there you go. He cannot get into this box. Now, this isn't good because, um, oh, this is Chris. Okay, so yep. And so this game should be over now. 
because he, he has the whole he has a queen right I mean come on he should be able to just go back and re and then just destroy oh that works too protects the pawn so yep yep he, he figured it out he had to be aggressive over here to pull the queen king over and then your king gets to eat these pawns his king gets to eat these pawns and it could be a, and it should be could be probably be a draw you, you got to play both sides um, and white forgot to play this side Chris forgot that side so that happens and now Chris I love it is playing it out no reason to resign you're playing to um, you know, you're only hoping for a draw at as soon as you lost as soon as you got a queen you're hoping for a draw so why resign because that doesn't give you a draw see if we can um, no I can't get through their phones it's ridiculous the airlines need money but let's see what he does I know he's not listening so let's see if he makes it a rook because that's safer or is he gonna just go for a queen yeah he went for a queen and trying not to stalemate <laughs> which is always at risk so here's the ladder technique with two queens there you go good job okay uh, Chris is logged out for the moment let's see how many do we have only have three in there again all right I'll join for a while didn't want to I'd like you guys playing instead tonight Hope the weather's nice for everybody. It's, it's pretty nice for us here, getting better. So Chris, yeah, you, uh, you 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 missed an opportunity, and you just have to be careful that you got to remember, um, if he's inside that box, your king had to come over. You let him get those pawns too far. So it's hard though. It's hard. End games are hard, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful in their simplicity and and complexity. Ooh, ooh, I like that. <laughs> All right, Chris, you and me, man. You get to go first, so I want to see that king move up. Good job. So one, two, three, four, five. I can move here to get the opposition, um, but man, it's so tempting just to let you. Uh, I'm gonna let you have the opposition, Chris. See if you remember and take it. Uh, nope. Uh, let's see. I could go here and take the opposition. I'm gonna take the opposition, even though it's a more passive square for the moment. I could come up, but yep. And uh, now I'm going to move over here because, again, I'm waiting for your king to try to take the opposition. Good job. Uh, we're going to move the pawn that we're supposed to, the outside pawn. I'm, I almost moved this one. That would be a horrendous mistake. And uh, let's see, Chris, let's see if you learned that you can't get through. No, good. Chris comes back this time. Well, we're going to push all the way. I'm going to push all the way, folks. Now, I could take, Chris gets to take back, um, but he has to take with the king. He has to take with the king, so I'm not crazy about that. I can push here. He can take here. I could take here. That'd be better for me. Then his king can still come over. My king can come over. If I push and he takes here, I can push down, but guess what? He still catches me no matter what, guys. Oh, man, he's got me. I blew it. I think I blew it. No, 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 no. So if I go here, he's eventually going to get this pawn, and then I still can't break through. So that's just frustrating, guys. But I'm going to go with this. We're going to see. We're going to see if he knows what to do. Let's see what Chris. Oh, he went the wrong way. So this is definitely passive. He doesn't want to go that way. He needed to come up here. Chris needed to come up here, take back the opposition again, and he could first start to play like he wants to get these guys to win. And then after I come over to stop these guys, then he could head back over this way. He'd win this pawn, and this pawn would go down. Now, I could try to be tricky and then, you know, get this pawn to run down. Um, but that would, be the, that would be the only chance I would have. And if he takes this pawn, I can't get that move in because then he would just take this pawn. So it was still, still dynamic. Um, this would have been really risky to do that early because if he just takes, he goes here. He could step into the box. Remember the box. Remember the box. He would have been able to step into the box and stop me. But now he's going totally the wrong way. He will not be able to stop me at all now. 
So now I'm going to eat these pawns, and he's way off in the wrong place. So he has no pawns to move. So he has to now bring his king all the way back up here to even try to be annoying to me. He has to bring his king back up. That was good because you never know. I might, I might have pre-moved. I might make other mistakes. See, now here comes his king. And I can come over here. I'm going to keep his king out so that I can start pushing this pawn. Because I can drop this pawn now. Ah, see, now he's going for it. But I'm going to get a queen. Now the only question is, do I want to go here first? If I go here, again, if he takes, I go here, 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 I queen. So um, I will queen quicker than him. So I'm going to actually do this trick now. Um, because his king got over here without enough going for it, I'm going to get the queen. He's going to have two pawns, but I still get a queen early enough that um, he's never going to queen this pawn. I can guarantee that much. Oh, well, I shouldn't say that. He's totally going to get queen his pawn. He doesn't get to keep the pawn queen afterwards. He could queen it right, right now. So I was wrong. I mean, if, I, if we were betting money about queening pawns, he would have won that bet. Um, let's say check. Almost a stalemate, but he had a pawn to push. So we're just going to take and then queen this one. Right? Why? Why? I don't need two queens, guys. So um, what you want to do is you want to simplify, making sure he has squares. I just want to simplify and make the game less risky. Oh. He's letting me trap him on the side. I want to definitely do that. And we can make Good game, Chris. Good game. All right. Oh, another one right away. LLMP. Let's see what he's going to do. Again, that's, that's, the, that's the move the computer likes, and I, I agree. All right. So I'm going to do that one because I want to take the opposition anyway. So now I can take the opposition. That was my goal there. And now I get the direct opposition. Interesting. I, I, I could have stymied him here. I did not. Could have stymied him there. Wish I had now. Okay, this is how I got into trouble last game. I think correct would be here versus where I went. The other hope is to actually make my passer become a passer right away. Let's try that. We'll try to see if we can in, see ourselves getting this pass pawn the way we want right now. Now, what's interesting, if he takes, I could check. But that, I mean, he just drops back into the right square anyway, and I don't get anything out of it. Because the thing is, he could give up this pawn, I take back, and his king can go eat that pawn, so he gets two for one. And I have to rush over here and try to get these two for one. Um, and I think white would be winning here. And this is why I was saying that I definitely don't think it's a win for black. Or I mean, yeah, win for black. No, join in. Um, join in. Uh, we have two minutes left. Join in. You could get definitely get a game in in those two minutes. So join in. Uh, I reacted because I was talking. I don't remember. Yeah, I would have been outside of the box, so I needed to go there. All right. Hopefully you'll get a game too. That I gave you five extra minutes. Hopefully, uh, it didn't it didn't show it yet, but hopefully it's going to give us five extra minutes. Hopefully, not too late. So yeah, I did have to get over here because I would have been outside of the box, right? I wouldn't have been able to get inside this box if I was here. I would have been a move short. 
So I did right. I had to get into the box. But he gets to go here, but then I get to go here, so that doesn't work. He might have to go here or take. Take, take. He's well inside the box. But remember we were talking about pawns being in your way? Here, you're not inside the box. And I'm going to move again, and then he won't be inside the box. Hello? Well, they finally called me back uh, for my original Corvette. So uh, um, I, I think I have a chance here to actually talk to a human being. So this is a great move because this should get us a draw. I was all worried there for a second that, okay, I take here and I'm feeling very drawish now. Let's see, let me think for a second. I need to come here. He's gonna be here, he can get in front, okay. This is critical. I could have, I could spend like my last four minutes figuring out the correct move. It's that important, guys. It really is. I, I didn't. I just moved. But that's how important it could be. If you have four minutes and forty six seconds, use three of them.
Sorry, guys. I'm finally talking to the plane people. Uh, they're pretty interesting. They don't want to transfer my uh, credit to my wife, so I'm going to have to have to keep fighting with them. Um, it, you can. You have to join the, the team first, Siberian. Are you in the team? And I think I know you, don't I? But, uh, yeah, if you're already a member of the team, then you can join the tournament. If you're not a member of the team, you got to ask to join the team, and then I can put you in. So check and see if you're a member. Oh, I do see a request to join. The, oh, Siberian. Sorry, you already did what you needed to do. I've now put you in, so now you can join the tournament. You're in, buddy. My bad. Yes, you did. I, I, I got you taken care of. Sorry. I did see the little little one number up there, but wasn't paying attention enough. This is a hard puzzle, right? This is like doing a puzzle live. Play the game to basically solve the puzzle. And if you play it right, if both of you play it right, it should be a draw. It really should come out to a draw. I only got five minutes left. Well, five minutes and 45 seconds left. Um, just a reminder, Wednesday at 11 o'clock, I'll be going over some of these games. And we'll be talking through this again. So if you missed the early part of the lesson tonight, we will be focusing on you again and going over it again on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we're going to play games together to work on your endgame. So we might have a whole slew of different endgame positions to try out. Um, we just might play some games and force it to get to an endgame. And we'll talk about how we transition into an endgame that's to our benefit. Remember, if you're head material, trade pieces, not pawns. If you're behind a material, trade pawns, not pieces. Sure thing. Okay, guys, I'm back on the phone with the airlines, and I can't transfer my credits. And now we're checking on other benefits, maybe some way to get a discount. So I'll, I will leave you at that. Hey, Siberian fell and gets into a game, and this game is almost over.
All right, guys, we'll see you Wednesday. Have a good night.